We're in Kazakhstan, at the Russian spaceport. Yuri Gagarin, the very first man in space, launched from here. Forty years later, this crew is getting ready to live on the space station. Two are Russian cosmonauts, Yuri Gidzienka and Sergei Krikalov. The crew's commander is an American, Bill Shepard, known as Shep. His wife, Beth, is the astronaut fitness trainer. I was fortunate in that I was there in the capacity of his strength and conditioning coach, whereas the Russian families were not able to come at all. They stayed in Star City. In the glare of the world's press, it isn't easy to find a few last quiet moments alone together. This is the walkway they begin after the first cosmonaut flew. Everybody that flew has a tree here. Gagarin's tree would be 40 years old. When Shep and I were walking down that row of trees, which is very historic, it was just hard for me to believe that we were finally here at this place because he had worked so hard, we had worked so hard for him to be there. And for us to finally be there together, to think about you know, the people that had come and gone and to know that this person next to me, my husband, was going to be a part of that history. And that was a very special time for us. Shep and his crew will be gone in space for over four months. The International Space Station is a way for us to learn how we can go to other planets and explore other ways to live outside Earth. I think that's really exciting. I wanted to go to. to station aboard a Soyuz rocket, the workhorse of the Russian space program. An unbelievable 406 launches have gone from this pad. Very unexpected for me, being out on the launch pad, very foggy day, Having several hundred people right at the base of the rocket, which for an American launch would be very unusual I and mean, unheard of. Being able to have such close contact with friends and family who are right there, right in the middle of this final moments before you're going to go fly was really exciting, really special. After everything you went through, seeing your face on launch day made it all worth it. Let's go do it! He was so happy. Imagine three guys in their gear inside a capsule the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, and it's a two-day trip. 
biggest risk is just getting out of the Earth's atmosphere to a safe orbit. Once you're at the end of the powered flight and you're floating around in orbit, then you can sit back and say, boy, I'm glad that we have gotten that done successfully. Sitting in your couch with your knees bent up almost to your chin for hours at a time, it's pretty uncomfortable. But the Soyuz is very reliable. It's got a lot of capability to get you up into space and get you back on a bad day. The house will be dark when they arrive. They can't be sure what lies in wait for them. Their job is to open everything up for the first time, then get it all working. Be prepared for the unexpected. They're set to go. But after two days in a capsule with your knees and your chin, you got a few other priorities. Put together an ace Soyuz pilot like Yuri. Sergei, a man who's already logged more than a year and a half in space, and a Navy SEAL for a commander. And you've got the right stuff for the job. After we got the node open, it started to seem like a really expansive place because we all have memories of being in much more confined spaces like Soyuz and even right. the shuttle. When I came to the Zvezda for the first time, it looked for me as home. And that was a place where we stay and live and sleep. I was thinking we were here. It has yes. life support yes. equipment, yes. guidance and navigation, jets to control the station, to move so. it around in space. Because if we were here, we wouldn't be seeing what we're seeing. No. We have several windows looking down. We have to exercise every day to stay fit. And even after a relatively short flight, you feel difference in your muscles. When we did this exercise near the window, every time you turn pedal, you fly several kilometers. It's more impressive to say, I run the bike from Paris to China. Probably nicest thing in sleep compartment is a window. From space, you don't see any borders. You really don't see where the United States ends and then Mexico starts. You feel yourself part of humankind, not just man from one country, one city.